Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yearell, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And I have a lovely lady here today. Dina Salisi is here, and welcome, Dina, to High Road to Humanity. Oh, thanks for having me, Nancy. It's great to be here with you today. I'm excited you're here. You guys, she's created these really cool cards. We're going to pull some today. We're going to talk about it. It's listening to the flowers. And I'm going to preface this uh, before I read her bio. I'm going to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about. This is really important stuff. So you're going to want to share the show. The idea that our emotions govern our physical state is recognized spiritually and scientifically finally, <laughs> now more than ever. So develop emotional well-being by using the energy of flowers with this powerful self-help tool that explores the 38 Bach flower essence remedies through the practice of positive affirmations. And you guys, I am so big into affirmations. You know, it's the power of our words. And now she's created this deck with flowers and it's so cool. And this goes back and we'll talk about this, the history of this, but with illuminating invocations and captivating, captivating drawn images, by the way, they're beautiful. You will discover your higher self by using ancient principles relating to earth energy in a way that is fresh and inspiring. Now, Dina Salisi is a healer. She's also an author. She's an educator. She's a certified health and wellness coach. She's a Bach Foundation registered practitioner, which I think is awesome. She's a certified hypnotherapist, and she lives in California with her family, two pups. And you guys, her website is her name. So it's dinasalisi.com. And the last name is spelled S-A-A-L-I-S-I, -I, in case you're wondering. You know, Dina, I love these cards. I told you before the show, I was so excited about them. Tell your story. I mean, you were in California, I think, and you were just picking flowers and then this whole thing evolved. Talk about this. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been definitely a lifelong gradual evolution with many different parts. And um, okay. I think what really sort of got me, like I was working with the Bach flower essences. Um, it's been about 30 plus years now. Wow. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't until that I lived in California and um, I was working on a friend's organic flower farm that I really started connecting with the energy of the flowers, like just right with them. And I mean, everyone I speak with, you know, we all feel better just being in the presence of nature. And flowers are just this, this miraculous gift, right? That, right. that they just grow up out of the ground. They're beautiful. They're colorful. Yeah. They're light filled energy. And now that we know that everything is just made up of energy, this is just special energy from nature. Mm -hmm. And so when I was working on the flower farm, um, my friends are very cool spiritual people and they would teach me you know how to cut the flowers they were flower growers and they would sell bouquets and do um, arrangements for brides and stuff right they teach me how to you know cut the flowers with reverence right oh and really connect with the plant and they themselves you know had like favorite flowers and you know after working with them for several months um it, you know first of all it didn't even feel like work even though it was physical labor mm -hmm, right there, you know, at the crack of dawn right it was really this um spiritual experience that we were sharing and we would talk about the flowers and you know almost relate to them like they were alive beings which they are which and they are yeah they are. um and so that kind of began me on a road of really looking at them with this different perception right that's a spiritual perception it's not just the physical matter mm -hmm. plant which itself is beautiful enough mm -hmm. it was really connecting more deeply and so once I started doing this and still working with the flower essence remedies 
kind of like a light bulb went off for me. And then um, it was about a decade ago now that the business my husband and I were operating was um, an entertainment production company. It folded. Mm -hmm. And I kind of went back to my roots in, um, nice. you know, of, of healing with the essences of nature. And I mean, like I'm an herbalist from way back. And so wow. I kind of, you know, knew it was the right thing to, to bring this to my coaching clients and to connect them with this energy that, you know, not only is a beautiful, soulful healing tool, but it works. <laughs> I know, know it does. It really does. Thing. You know, that's, the thing that's truly exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, isn't it interesting how you were divinely guided to this place in California? Because mm -hmm. yeah, back to what you really felt, you know, was your mission it, that what this is your mission is to bring these, you know, these are really cool cards, you guys, to bring these to the forefront. You know, I like cards because they are full of energy. And I told you before the show, and I want to tell the audience, you know, um, this comes with a beautiful case, a beautiful book, by the way, but I pulled one of her cards yesterday and then I read it. I pulled chicory. This is what it looks like. And the affirmation on it is my heart opens in unconditional love. I give of myself without expectations and I loosen my grip and enjoy security. That was for me. And man, the, I loosen my grip part because I'm a control freak. So I pull the card, you guys. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to shuffle them and pull another one. I pulled the same card. <laughs> and that tells me that there's so much energy in these cards. So then this morning I get up, I'm going to pull another one of her cards because I think they're really cool. <laughs> I pull the same card. <laughs> so I guess I'll just put it on my mirror. These cards have energy, just like the flowers have energy. And when you said, I want to ask you a question because you really intrigued my interest. How do you cut a flower properly? With reverence. So when, when we're looking at the plant, right? right. Yeah. So, um, so this is sort of the foundation of flower therapy, like what Dr. Bach did and what, what flower essence manufacturers do now. Right. We try to, we look at the plant to kind of allow it to guide us what it's um, spiritual, metaphysical, emotional properties are, right? Okay. Yeah. So um, for instance, let's take the chicory, for instance. Okay. Chicory okay. flower, it's this bright blue beautiful weed <laughs> it's a weed I mean no doubt about it it grows in the roadside ditches it doesn't want water but it has this really luminous deep blue glow yeah. and so um you touched on the affirmation which um is a sort of control and so when we look at the plant like if anyone has ever tried to pick a chicory flower it's almost impossible to pick honestly oh they're like they're stuck in there so like when we think of control right we think of being kind of stuck maybe there's a rigid property okay okay us. and so like thank you for for illuminating that because that's maybe not always the you know the most comfortable place to be but right. so I love that you're smiling and you're saying well I'm a control freak like well right I am <laughs> but, but right away this is what the cards and this is what the flowers are showing us that you can illuminate that challenge within yourself. You can touch it. You can still smile about it. It's not like daunting. No. And like if you were to read further about chicory and what it's used for, that might resonate. And then you might want to use the remedy. You might just work with the affirmation. Um, but so, yeah, so we look at the plant first. So chicory is like a difficult plant. It's 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 definitely got control about mm -hmm. it. It wraps around other plants. It kind of, you know might strangle them a little bit. And the chicory challenge is about sometimes, um, you know, because we want to connect so deeply with our loved ones, sometimes we use a heavy hand and we might mm -hmm. know that it's best to use a lighter touch, but maybe we just kind of need that emotional, psycho-spiritual push. Yeah. So that's what flowers offer us. So I love that. And then I'm going to share with you. Okay. Because we have these flowers, the Bach flowers are um, in seven different categories. Yes. Chicory is in overcare for the welfare of others. So that again, mm. when we're connecting with our loved ones in a way that maybe is a little restrictive, we recognize we can loosen our grip and that will kind of create a better flow. So before we started, I drew a card. <laughs> wasn't chicory but it was vine which is okay. in the same whoops my I have a funny screen oh well that's same, cool same category all right what so does the affirmation say others and it has to do with control okay 
So cards, like you said, cards hold energy and mm -hmm. we can draw cards and, you know, oftentimes they're spot on. They really speak to us. And what I love about my card deck is that not only is it the card, not only is it the affirmation, but then if you really want it to use the remedy, you could really work on deeper. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you that question because my, you know, I read in here, you talk a lot and we'll get into it about Dr. Edward Bach and how he put the flowers into a bowl, a glass bowl with, uh, what is it? Um, not just regular water. Is it, it like is distilled? Spring, it's spring just, water. just yeah. spring water. Okay. And then that's how you pull the essence out. Now, if I don't have any chicory and I want to, you know, use this essence, how do I obtain that? I mean, is there right. somewhere I can purchase? How does that work? Yeah, well, flower essence remedies, especially the Bach brand or the 38 Bach essences are pretty widely available. Um, okay. So there are most um, apothecaries, most whole foods, stuff like that. You can always order them online through the Bach Center. Um, the Flower Essence Society in California is a very trusted resource and they also oh. make Bach flowers. Okay. Um, yeah, but so you could order them. And, and that's what I do. I mean, because I'm a clinician, I'm not actually like setting bowls of water around and making all my remedies. I right. Just the remedies from trusted manufacturers. And then I create custom blends for my clients. And okay. So, so question, how do, okay. I don't mean to interrupt your train of thought there, but okay. So I get this and what do I do? Do I just, you know, um, smell it? Do I apply it? What do I do? Right. So they have no odor. They're not essential oils. They're in a tincture form. So they're more like a, you know, I would say they're more like a homeopathic tincture. Okay. Okay. So like, okay. All right. Yeah. So you take them internally in your okay. mouth. And they can work as quickly as a few hours to a few months, depending on how deep the challenge is. So that's the other part. Mm -hmm. If you're working on something, um, an acute challenge, like you woke up and you just feel cranky and you don't usually feel cranky, you can kind of do a little self-reflective process. You might draw a card um, and then you can use the remedy. If it's something that you're working on that's deeper, like I, I work with a lot of trauma. Right. Okay. It right. Can take, of course, longer because it's more deep seated, but it's a beautiful process of like gentle opening, right? That we can right. feel and that we experience. And then often what happens is other layers begin to open. So it really is a system of deeper self awareness, like getting to know ourselves on a mm. deeper level, being curious about what yeah. we're experiencing, and then applying, you know, the appropriate remedy. Yeah. Right. I want to talk a little bit about Dr. Edward Bach. Um, you know, in the 1930s in England, he did develop the method for using this subtle energy from flowers to relieve the disharmony of disease. And I love this. I, I read this. I knew it, but it just made so much sense. He said patients diagnosed with the same illness would have different emotional responses. And every illness we have is emotional. But here's what I start. He discovered the emotional state of a patient was the was more important to their recovery than tending to the symptoms. And if we could just get doctors to do that today. Yeah. Yeah. And some doctors are, you know, yes, yes. He was a doctor. He was a scientist, but then he yeah. had a greater calling. Right. Right. And so this is perfect. Like, I mean, I've worked with quite a few people undergoing cancer treatment, right? Okay. So I could have somebody come to me, they could be downright angry right? Like sure. oh, this happened to me. I'm really mad about it. Right. I could have the person with the same even kind of cancer with the same diagnosis come to me and be like, I just can't stop crying. I'm so sad. So you see right away how those would be two different paths to follow in just where their emotions need to be best supported, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it just makes a whole lot of sense because I realized over time that emotions do, um, your body's talking to you. So when you have something wrong with you, it's because your body's trying to tell you something. And with these cards, I, I just, I love the energy of these. I want to ask you something else. Is there a rose in here? Wild rose. Yeah, there is. Okay. Cause rose is always, I don't know, I have the essential oil rose and that always um, resonates with me. What is the meaning of a rose or the. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about a rose I mean I think it's the most beloved flower of all time like there's poetry written about it like yes it's emblematic of just love and divinity right and yeah. so I think 
it's very life affirming, right? Like rose really affirms life. The, the scent is heavenly. The There's so many different varieties. It, like it really is abundant in life force energy. Mm-hmm. And so the wild rose is used for a state of apathy, like oh. when we're really kind of disconnected from life. And I think, so the thing I love about this too is like Bach, um, you know, he discerned these 38 different emotions. And when we look at them all, we can all kind of point to it one time or another in our lives that we've experienced these emotions. So they're very relevant to like just human nature. And so, you know, when I talk about wild rose energy and I talk about a state of apathy, well, you know, that's not to say that you feel that now, but I'm sure at some point in your life, we've, you know, or we've all felt a disconnection from life and we kind of didn't know how to get back into it. And what I've seen with wild rose for people who've kind of had a lot of, um, you know, disheartening stuff happen, and then they just don't even want to try. It is it is kind of a form of depression. Oh, okay. And so what I've seen this do for them is kind of reconnect them with the essence of life and just, you know, kind of restart their passion, as it were. And so that's like Rose is all about that, right? Just this love and this passion and vibrancy. I just feel like it's healing. I don't know. I've always felt that way about the rose. I always get the, I've always gotten the essential oils and I will now, I think, get some of these um, and you call them tinctures. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And that's what I think. This is really cool. I like the guidebook too. I just want to tell everybody that this comes with a guidebook. She tells her story in here. She also, uh, each flower is in here with the affirmation and uh, some, some background on It's also, it's very interesting. You, um, how did you, and it also, I want to say this too, the affirmation really could be a prayer. You want it to be spoken out loud. And I want to get that out because it's the energy of our words, you guys, it's the energy that goes out into the universe. You know, as you did this, um, this was an intuitive thing. Definitely. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. I want to say thank you 100% a prayer yes and and like I've often regarded the little booklet kind of like a little prayer booklet like you can Mm -hmm. carry it in your backpack but yes so when I was going through training um at the box center um you know I I kind of wanted I was studying the remedies and kind of learning we're trying to memorize what they were all for right so I just kind of intuitively started writing affirmations to help me ground into them. And then once I had all the affirmations written, I started giving them to friends, giving them to clients. So I would like create a formula uh, for a client and then I would give them the affirmation for each flower. And the feedback I was getting was great. Everybody was like, wow, it really does help me. Like you just said, the power of the spoken word, it Mm -hmm. really changes your thought process a lot quicker than if you're just you know, contemplating it, right? Like you're saying it out loud, you're speaking it to the universe. And, um, you know, you might not believe it at first. And that's another thing. Like sometimes we don't quite embrace the sentiment. And that to me shows like where we need to work more deeply or when we do finally embrace it. That to me, like I notice with myself when I do finally memorize the affirmation or feel like yes, I'm really feeling that. That's kind of when I'm onto my next layer of healing. Like I know right. kind of heart is kind of is healed. As well. Yeah. Well, the affirmations change. I've been doing affirmations for a long time. And um, I wrote a book on energy and the power of the spoken word. So I'm really into energy a long time ago, but uh, it, it's so interesting to me to see the energy of the flowers. I mean, I knew they had energy, but you bring it to the forefront and it's just so interesting. And then you bring the emotion part in, which Bach talked about, and it just kind of all comes together. I just think it's really cool. Do you want to pull one for the audience today? Absolutely. Do you want to pull it or do you want me to? You do it. You do it. <laughs> all right. And we should probably say these are illustrated by Audrey Violet. And she did a nice job, by the way. She is an amazing artist and she's a friend of mine and she was a student and a client. And um, wow. she is she was about 20 years old when she started illustrating the deck. So she's just about as young as she could be. And it took the whole process took us about seven years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Because at first, like you said, it was intuitive and it was just a labor of love. Like we didn't know it was going to end up in the physical form like this. Yeah. So it really is incredible. Wow. And her drawings are so delicious and beautiful. And yeah, so I'm just going to get quiet for a okay, moment. Me too. Okay. 
Okay, and this is a universal card for us all. And I picked chicory. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got nothing. You're going to have to talk okay. about this. <laughs> I'm going to read the affirmation again. Okay. My heart opens in <laughs> unconditional love. I give of myself without expectations. I loosen my grip and enjoy security. So, yeah. So if I think of this card on a collective level, okay. like a universal, like how does this universally apply to us? You know, I think of the human condition. I think of the state we're in. And I think many of us who are sensitive and even those who aren't sensitive, you know, are aware that we're kind of in a in a dire way, you know? Yes, we are. And so this kind of, to me, the unconditional love piece speaks to me about maybe maybe loving those that aren't so lovable all the time. And, you know, I know that's not easy. And I know that I don't, I don't, you know, abide by um, destruction or, or hurting other people. I don't mean loving, loving destruction or loving hurtful people. But I guess I do mean just um, resting into that space of humanity mm -hmm. and knowing that we each, you know, have a golden seed within us. So, I guess the more we can kind of loosen our grip, the more we can all enjoy more security in our relationships, right? And just kind of reflecting on how maybe we hold too tightly and how we can just kind of live and let live, perhaps. Well, I got to say, that's kind of blown my mind here <laughs> that you pulled this card again. It, but I now I want to tell you what I think about it, because I'm an intuitive too. Um, yeah. Loosen in the grip, I think for me, my heart opens to unconditional love. You know, it's really important. I think that everybody open their heart right now. A lot of times, I think a lot of us are closed off yeah. because of things that happen to us and it's, and we protect our heart and it's hard to open it back up. And a lot of times, and this is the other thing, I think about the show when I say I give of myself without expectations. I'm always like, okay, I want more people to hear this information. It's so important. But then it reminded me today, just do it. And whoever needs to hear it's going to hear it you know, and then loosen the grip. That's the control freak part where we're all trying to control. And I got to say, you know, it's like, let go, let God, let go, let God, you know, you, sometimes when you hold on too tight, then the universe can't do its work because you're holding on. That's what I get from this and security. I'm very secure right now, but you know, I haven't been for a while. So it's hard to like, okay, I'm good. So that's what this meant to me, to be honest with you. I think it means something different to everybody, but that's what it meant to me. Yeah. And I think there's definite overlaps with, with what we said. And so that's really a beautiful, yeah. I think it's like the being instead of doing like, sometimes we overdo it. Right. And we mess ourselves up. I know <laughs> that's true. That's true. Trust so me. I want to hear about your practice. So tell me what you do and tell me, you know, the whole, so if, if somebody would like to contact you and they would like to have a session how does this work and what do you do yeah so um everything's on my website and I do um meet with people individually one-on-one -on -one. Okay. and so what would a flower session look like well it looks like a coaching session I think a lot of people know what coaching is nowadays sure um, you know and we sit and we talk and and people come because they have a challenge right like that's why they're coming to see me is because they have something they need guidance with yes I begin by saying you know I'm the conduit for the energy. I'm not, you know, that's what a healer, a good healer is, yes. right? It's not, I'm not healing you. I'm not fixing you. You're doing the work. The fact that somebody shows up, that to me is like, you know, the magic has begun, right? The work has begun. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I just help people to kind of reflect and go deeper. And then we talk about the challenges and I'll be jotting down flowers because I listen in flowers, you know, listening to flowers. I hear. Yeah. You know, resonance and um and then at the end of the session I'll kind of line out these are the flowers I have selected for you and because I want to make sure that they resonate it's not just me prescribing it really is about the person feeling it and wanting to embrace it and maybe that feels relevant maybe this doesn't right and then I create a combination formula so I'll combine flower um, up to up to seven flowers in one little one ounce tincture I'll okay. give it to you you'll go home and take the whole bottle so four drops four times a day lasts about three to four weeks. Okay. And then after that time, it all different things happen. Some clients I see monthly, they just, you know, kind of want to keep working with me and that's great. Some people become students. So I teach how to use the system and then they nice. get their own kit and I'm 
their teacher and I'm not their, you know, practitioner anymore. And so it, it really is great. Some people come once every three months, some people come once and then they're good. You know, it's, it's all different things. It depends what they want to do. And so, yeah, I, I definitely work one-on-one -on -one. Um, nice. classes and um, I do a flower circle that meets. Oh, that's cool. That anybody can join the first time for free to see how they like it. And that's really great because that's an hour and a half one Saturday a month, and I'll run you through a guided visualization. I'll like pick kind of an emotional challenge that will work with each time. And I'm also a certified hypnotherapist. So I'll do a guided visualization that kind of gets people, you know, in that zone of kind of like yeah. you know, powered and what they need to do. Yeah. And we'll talk about the flowers that support that emotional challenge. So it really is great. And we have a great community there. So I have a lot of different options for people. That's cool. Do you have any stories you want to share with us about a client or a particular situation that amazed you even? Um, they all amaze me. <laughs> um, let's see what comes. I just thought I'd ask because I. Yeah, that's okay. Um, well, so this is interesting in reflecting on chicory. I have a dog <laughs> that I call a little chicory baby because she's always at your heels. And we've all kind of heard of that animal, right? Right. But they're kind of like always at your heels and they're very like, like sticking to you the way the chicory flower, it like has the sticky. Yeah. To it. And so I have this dog and um, I, I given her chicory before and it definitely helps her to feel more secure. So that's the other thing, like you can use oh. animals babies yeah yeah and I've definitely I use them a lot on animals and I see this transformation so yeah you just put it right in their water how do you know what dosage just a drop it's the same it's well it's the, well because I have a cat this is so crazy you're yeah saying so single remedies are two drops so it's just right in their water bowl and you can repeat it you know every time you change their water I would repeat it until you notice they stop the behavior so like with my dog it was about a week yeah, yeah. But she was a very clingy, like, and fear, like, yes. they're not secure, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so crazy. It's really crazy you would say that. I have a ragdoll cat and yeah. she's on, she's like, she sleeps with me. I mean, she is right there. Right there. Yeah. And she, this would help. And she gets so nervous when anybody else comes around and she doesn't like, you know, she's like scared to death, you know? So that would help her security. <laughs> yeah for sure oh my gosh well I'm gonna have to do this I didn't know that you could use it like for pets and stuff that's really cool so now I what's next for you I mean you've done these cards it's taken you seven years my gosh what what's on the what's on the horizon yeah, September of this year the art of flower therapy is coming out and it's um it's a book comprehensive guide to using how to use the flower oh. remedy so it's got a section on pets a section on plants oh my gosh um, it's got really in depth for each flower and then I add either a personal story or a client story so it kind of grounds it more like people can understand it mm -hmm. better I feel like when they read that so that'll be out in September and then um that's fantastic next year I'll be doing more like um you know the conscious life expo and things like that so I'm going to be doing more in li live in person stuff and then I also have a healing arts studio in the Napa Valley that will be, it's kind of a soft opening, but full-time in the fall. And I do um, client sessions there in person and I do sound baths there. So Now, what is it? Sound baths, crystal sound bowl healing. So oh, you do? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, I also work with crystal energy. Yes. So I'm an energeticist. So energy Very good. But flowers are definitely my energy of choice. And so everything I weave, um, I weave the flowers in with all I do. I love it. Yeah, I have a crystal bowl. I have the, uh, God, I can't think of what the note is. It's the love one. It's, it's the high vibration of love. It's pink. Yeah, yes, I have a pink Himalayan and uh, got it in Sedona. And... Uh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I really love it. I don't play it as much as I should, but I think when you play the, the sound, I'm really into the healing of the sounds too. It sounds like you are. And that really resonates. I think it heals the neighborhood. <laughs> In fact, it does. And my same dog, whenever I do the sound bowl, yes, they come right there and she gets mellow and she's not a mellow being. So right. yeah. 
we're on the same we're on the same wavelength as they would say <laughs> I think that's really cool <laughs> what else would you like to share with the audience before we get out of here for today this is so interesting you guys and now how do they get these do they get them on Amazon is there anywhere a web books are sold anywhere you know if you want to okay. go to a bookshop you can order them if they don't carry them but anywhere books are sold yeah. okay and is there any I need to ask this too I just kind of smutzed the cards and I said a prayer and I just intuitively pulled one mm -hmm. is that what you recommend I didn't see anything in here you know a lot of times they'll say oh well do this or do that but that's what I recommend and I think that most people once they have the medium they they know what to do so you know my I kind of have a light touch like I don't want to be overly directive because everyone has their own way and what's going to work for them so yeah I think just if you're being quiet for a moment setting the intention and then just pulling the card it speaks okay perfect well I thank you I am so thrilled that you came here today and talked to us about this. This has been really enlightening, even though I know about energy and I teach the audience about energy. I mean, this is just fabulous stuff. And thank you for that. I'm going to get some of the tinctures so I can, I guess I'll have to get the, the Bach flowers and, and look and see which ones, um, you know, if, if somebody doesn't have a session with you and they just pull a few cards and then order them, you feel like that's okay? I feel like that's okay. I also feel like they could just work with affirmation alone and that could do the trick, you know? That could do, they don't really need powerful. that. It's yeah. Powerful. You could yeah. go out, you could try to find the flower in person. I know, I thought about that. Sit with it or make your own remedy. You know, there's so many things. I have a YouTube video about how to make a flower essence remedy. So oh, cool. we'll get on my YouTube channel. There's a, like, it's, I think like a 10 minute video. And okay. It really, it just shows you how to do it. So there's many ways to connect with flower energy. And that is what I wanted to leave people with is just Good. The, tell us really the, the awareness that nature is the one source of energy that nourishes every living being on the planet. So this is the season of light, you know, with the days at their longest, go out, be in nature, be with the flowers and really just embrace the healing that's there. It's free. It's there. Yeah. We need to get outside you guys ground and heal. And the energy of the earth is very powerful. Wow. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. You guys, it's called Listening to the Flowers. If you want to get the cards, they're by Dina Salisi and illustrated by Audrey Violet. And I appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys, I'm going to get out of here for today. If you want an angel reading, go to my website, nancyyearout.com, and you can book your date and time. I hope you guys have a fabulous week and God bless. <laughs>